Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I wanted to come on here and talk about the whole Meek Mill drama, honey. Yes, Meek Mill is once again trending all over social media. So what went down is that basically all this took place last night. Nobody. Nobody at all. Here comes Meek Mill. So Meek Mill takes to Twitter and he says this. I'll get all the main big artists in Philly a deal if they put them bodies behind them and squash them beefs. I hear about got some hot young bulls from my city, but they all beefing. Then he goes on to say, and that's just an idea, but I'll push it through my city. If y'all make it a thing, it's like five clicks that's talented, but they deep in and they get the most attention when they beefing. So that is the idea that Meek Mill proposed. You know, he wants to sign, you know, a, a Philly click or a Philly artist as long as they put the beef behind them. Philly, like many other cities around the country, the violence has been just outrageous this year in the city. Lots of killings, lots of drama. You know, that demon time energy is strong, y'all. I keep telling y'all this. The people of Philadelphia are reaching out to their police commissioner and district attorney to protect them from the soaring level of gun violence violence and homicide. Tonight is National Night Out, coming one day after six people were murdered on the streets of Philadelphia, sending the city's homicide total past all of last year. Action News reporter Maggie Kent is live in southwest Philadelphia tonight. Maggie, law enforcement facing tough times here. They certainly are. And tonight, Jim, we're at the 12th District's National Night Out event. They're trying to bridge the gap between police and community and make that connection line much more strong. This is a city comptroller tweeted out today that the city is on par for 450 murders this year. We are not giving up. We are not waving the white flag. And we are not taking our foot off of the gas. Numbers released by the city show shooting incidents are up 57% over 2019 and the number of shooting victims is up 47%. Homicide numbers are up 40% this year and have now eclipsed last year's total for the entire year. It now stands at 365 murders in 2020. So, um, what ended up happening is that there's a local rapper, and I've never heard of him. So today, his name is Poundside Pop, okay? The name is very mouthy, it's a lot to digest. But Poundside Pop decided to confront Meek Mill because he was tired of Meek Mill, you know, basically trying to act like Meek Mandela when he's supposedly not about that life. So Poundside ends up retweeting Meek, and he adds him, and he says, This you. And it's an old tweet from Meek this past summer. And in that tweet, Meek Mill says, pretty soon everybody gonna have to pick a side. Too much real shit going on to be cool with everybody. So Poundside Pop says, at Meek, it's time for you to pick a side. Is you zoo or not, nigga? That's what he said. I don't know what zoo is. I'm trying to learn. I'm assuming zoo's a gang. So then Meek Mill replies back to him and he says, everybody got my number. To you, young bull, be losing y'all's minds off them drugs. So that was Meek Mill's response. And then Meek goes and he's replying back to different people in his comment section. And so Meek says he's from 18th and Catherine. Then he says, say no more. What? Then he says, I ain't no fucking zoo gang, nigga. Then Pop says at Meek Mill, SNM folks. Don't know what that means. So they're going back and forth. And then Pound Sign posts again and he says, when Meek said he's from 18th Street, and he says, this is sad because at Meek Mill don't know where he's from. I thought you was from the Burks. And then people on social media got involved and a lot of people in Philly are saying that they're not claiming Meek. Meek needs to get on somewhere with the bullshit. He's doing too much. He's trying to be Meek Mandela. So they were really dragging him. Um, a lot of people were just tired of his nonsense. Han also said that Meek is the first nigga from North and South. And then um, a female replied back and she said, the North ain't claiming him, y'all can have him. And then Pound Sign says, I'm letting the people speak. Hashtag Philly, hashtag Killadell, hashtag Meek Mill, hashtag Pound Side Pop. 
So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys these memes, these comments. When I tell you Philly Twitter was going in, the back and forth was a mess. I was over here sipping slow. So y'all go ahead and check this out. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. They said, they said he is banning him. I'm not from the P. I'm not saying this. That's what the P is saying. He said he's from 18th and Catherine. They said, no, the fuck he ain't. He ain't from no fucking 18th and Catherine. Where you from, though? <laughs> Damn. 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 We went to war. Don't matter who did what to who at this point. Fact is, we went to war. And now there ain't no going back. I mean, shit. It's what war is, you know? Once you in it, you in it. If it's a lie, then we fight on that lie. But we gotta fight. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Uh, all that killer shit. He took all that shit in his rest, bro. He'll stand on none of that shit he talking See, that's about. what I'm saying. Meek not no real street nigga, though. So he coming from a perspective of a, a entertainer. Yeah, it got it. What's that? I think it's the sound of no one caring. You need to worry about your own motherfucking business and go back to work, bitch. You need to worry about your own motherfucking business and go back to work, bitch. All right, so you guys just saw the comments, the tweets, what folks had to say. You know, like I said, Meek Mill is currently trending right now all over social media, all over Twitter. So I'll say this, you know, I think that there's a lot of ways to, you know, there's a lot of ways to spin this. There's a lot of nuances to this. I get what Meek Mill is trying to do. He's saying, okay, there's a clique of guys over here, clique of guys over here. Y'all are talented. Y'all can be in the rap game. You know, I like y'all's music, but y'all got to put the beef down, okay? Philly's starting to look like Chicago with, you know, 63rd against 64th. And I think he's trying to prevent that, which I agree. We don't need any more young black men dying needlessly over a bunch of bullshit, over territory, blocks, drugs, things that they don't own and they're losing their lives behind. So I get that. But the problem is this. Meek very much reminds me of T.I. He has that T.I. syndrome where he wants to help the community and he wants to rescue, you know, black people and tell black folks what they need to do, you know, to get right. OK, I get that. But the problem is a lot of people look at this as right message, wrong messenger. 
Okay. And the reason why I say Ron Messenger is when you're serious about change, when you're serious about doing better and showing that you yourself have changed, because let's not forget all of these guys, Meek Mill, Rick Ross, T.I., all of these guys got into the rap game by perpetuating a certain image about either gangs, violence, trapping, selling drugs, you know, pulling guns out, robbing niggas, shooting niggas. This is the persona that they put out there. And a lot of their music helped to fuel this energy. It also helped to, you know, perpetuate the stereotype that that's how young black men should be and behave. And all black men come from the hoods and they're all thugs. And, you know, this is what was in the music. So the same people who fed off of that music, who thought that was the way to be and that's what made you a man, you know what I'm saying? They don't have the luxury of not being in the hood. They don't have the luxury of celebrity status. They don't have the luxury of having security and everything else. So they're still in the hood fighting this war. And so a lot of people do feel a way when you have celebrities who have made it out and now you want to top down. Now you want to try and reach back out. But a lot of people feel like, okay, Meek, you've been in the game for years and you have not reached out or put anybody on from Philly. Hell, you went down and got little Snoop, who is from Louisiana, and tried to put him on before somebody in your own neighborhood so a lot of people feel the way about that okay also when I say that change starts with yourself it really does when I go to Meek Mill's page and I look at his you know his Twitter his Instagram location says Philadelphia. Why does it not say Philadelphia? Once again, you're still trying to have one foot in the streets and one foot in music and in entertainment and in, you know, trying to save the people and you can't do it. OK, and that's where that that's where it's conflicting. And I think that's the issue that people have with the T.I.s and the meat mills is that in one breath, I want to, you know, talk about positivity and trying to help. But then another breath, your location says Philadelphia. Meaning that you're still perpetuating that and you're still putting that energy out there. You know, that'd be like me having my location be Murderapolis. Like every city has a damn name for all the foolishness that goes on. We're Murderapolis. You know, you know, sometimes they nickname Baltimore, Maryland, Bodymore, Murderland. OK, so I don't understand why he would want to perpetuate that. It's all types of just crazy names that we name these cities, Chicago, Chirac and all types of stuff like that. But when you are really trying to stop that type of energy and you're really trying to change, you're not going to represent that. Even if it seems petty or nobody should care, I don't miss shit. OK, you can't put that energy out there. And then in the same breath, you're trying to change that energy. And I think that it's also sad that, you know, when somebody is trying to make a change and trying to help out, people want to knock it. But again, it also goes back to that person's character and what they've been out here promoting all these years. And I think that's why the folks in Philly are not taking him seriously. OK, so after everything went viral, the back and forth, the drama, I wanted to see what Meek Mill had to say today, especially now that he's trending. So Meek Mill took to uh, took to Twitter an hour ago and he says, we run the hood. Fuck is you saying? So once again, you're still perpetuating that whole hood lifestyle. OK, then he goes on to say that he's about to drop a new flame this Friday. So he has more music coming out, which is awesome. Then as of eight minutes ago, he says, now we're going to pick a side. LOL. What made y'all's boy bring me up? So that's just what he posted. Not even eight minutes ago. So like I said, once again, that same energy. And that's why people don't take a lot of these celebrities and rappers seriously when they are trying to do good because then they just resort back to that hood mentality and make it look like, well, I'm still real and I'm still that dude. You know, so the whole situation is interesting, but something definitely has to change. You know, while it's easy to throw shots at Meek and drag him on social media, the killings need to stop. Not just in Philly, but all over the country. You know, this 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 energy of death and negativity needs to cease. It needs to slow down. You know, my biggest fear is because the shutdown is coming, more people may be laid off of work, the damn PPT, the damn PPP scams, that shit's a wrap. So you got a lot of wolves out here. You got a lot of folks who are hungry and who are trying to figure out what, what their next move is going to be. So they're not trying to hear anything from famous rich celebrities that are so far removed from the situation. You know, but like I always say at the end of the day, nobody can force you to do right. Nobody controls anybody. We all control ourselves. So change starts with self. So if the people in Philly in that particular area want change and they want to end the violence, 
then those people need to take personal responsibility and stop the foolishness. Stop the shooting, stop the violence, stop all of that stuff, you know, work better to bring the community together. Because at the end of the day, all this divisiveness, it's only destroying the community. And it's the next generation that's really being affected. You know, what future are we leaving to the babies that are coming behind us? So, I mean, the whole thing is just very frustrating. It's very sad to watch, you know. But like I said, I think he was genuine when he was trying to offer that. But again, it also falls into the category of right message, wrong messenger. And I think a lot of these rappers that are becoming more woke and more aware and more conscious of, you know, the part that they played in perpetuating the violence and the nonsense, it's starting to guilt them. You know, you have a lot of rappers saying that they're going to start changing the lyrics and not try and put out that same energy out there about killing and shooting. And, you know, and I hope that they do. And with that being said, I got to give props to rappers like NLE Chopper. Now, a few of y'all told me to go back and re-listen to him because a lot of these young dudes that come out to me, all they're talking about is violence and killing other black people. You know, I, I just, my energy, I'm very protective of it. And I'm protective of like, you know what I'm saying, what I listen to. And so I kind of wrote him off, wrote off Polo G, you know, all of them. Not wrote them off like that, but just, you know, unless I can find a good song. I don't want to download an album and literally out of 18 songs, only four, don't kill my vibe, right? So a lot of y'all hit me up after my last live and were like, you know, you need to out, check out uh, NLE Chopper. He's changed. You know, he said he's not going to rap about violence no more. And he did. You know, back last month, he went to his social media page and he says, I don't rap about violence no more. If you hear it from me, it's my old song. I want to spread positivity and wake people up. I'll still drop them for y'all, though. Just know I'm on to better and I'm trying to grow. I got more to talk about now. And he's young. He just turned 18, November 1st. So he's a shorty, you know. So it's like to see him willing to change. I see he's posting pictures from his garden now. And um, I can't play his music, but there was a clip that he had posted on his Instagram. And he was rapping about talking to his water because water has life. And I mean, he was just saying some real deep stuff. So that made me happy. Like, OK, good. I'm glad, you know, these dudes are starting to, you know, switch it up a lot younger. They're not waiting until their fifth album. You know, what I'm saying after they don't put out all this toxicity to not be woke. So I can respect NLE to be this, you know, kid at 17, 16, 17, trying to make it. And then he decides, like, nah, this is not the way. I can't keep putting this negativity out there. And at 18, he decides to turn it around. With his very next album, he decides to turn it around. So much respect to him. You know, we're all so quick to tear down these young rappers. But I think when they're doing something like that, when they're doing good, when they're trying to put out good energy, we need to receive that and also shout them out and, you know, uplift them. You know what I'm saying? But I think what's sad is that, the only way a lot of these dudes can get on is if they talk about violence and low vibrational stuff. That is what these record labels want from them. And that's why I say that when it all boils down to it, I hold the record labels accountable. They're the ones who perpetuate that. They're the ones who go who are now going to the hood and they are giving record deals to real gangsters. OK, as opposed to kids who have been rapping for years who don't do any of that gangbang stuff that they're not interested in that. Now they're giving record deals to real gangsters. And, and that's where a lot of the problem in hip hop is coming from. And that's why the vibration is so low. So shout out to um, NLE Chopper for trying to do the right thing and trying to change the frequency earlier in his career. As opposed to being an old washed up rapper who wants to now keep preaching to everybody after they done made all this money and, and fatten up their pockets off of perpetuating bullshit. I hope that they do change their lyrics up. I hope, you know, they talk about other things besides the killing and robbing of other black men, you know. But again, even if they change their music up, I still also have to hold us as fans responsible because so many times when we see rappers trying to change and do the right thing, we don't allow them to do that. And on top of that, so many of the fans support the low vibrational music, you know, and it's like. It's hard for people who just want to rap about regular stuff to even get a break in the industry. So like I said, there's so many nuances to this. There's so many ways to break this down. You know, so the whole situation is just really sad and it's very toxic where hip hop has gone, you know, and hopefully there will be a change. But 
the change also has to be on the fans as well. You have to start supporting, you know, the less violent music, the more positive music. That's one thing, you know, I do like about Kanye is that, you know, he's from Chicago and granted he's from the suburbs, but just him being from Chicago and he never really rapped about any of that stuff. Cause you can be from the suburbs and rap about, you know, bang, bang, shoot him up all day as if you were from the projects, but Kanye never did that. And that's one thing I do respect about him. So I think a lot of these dudes are not realizing, you know, the the seeds that they planted are now coming home to harvest and it's making them feel kind of bad. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. How do you guys feel about Meek Mill trying to help out, you know, other, you know, Philly artists and people attacking him and giving him backlash? Do you feel like Meek Mill is the right messenger? Do you feel like he's not the right messenger? And how do you feel about what Pound Sign Pop had to say about the situation and, you know, people dragging him? And how do you guys feel about what is going on right now in hip hop in general? I mean, we have so many rappers that are getting shot, going to jail. It's just been a crazy year in hip hop so go ahead and leave a comment make sure you guys hit that subscribe button don't forget to thumbs up the video make sure you share the video and last but not least don't forget to hit that notification bell so that we can be down with the notification squad talk to you later deuces